Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Hope 2020 is treating you well. I know. I already heard it. I'm experiencing it, too. But... I believe, I believe that God has something amazing. That's the difference. The difference between this year or today or tomorrow or the weeks, whatever life has that is to press us or push us down, I believe. Because we are seeds, we're seeds, right? And life is like soil to me. And when you plant a seed and you press it down, guess what happens? Nothing. At first. At first. Now, we know our God is amazing. We know he's big, but he's like the sun. He's not the sun. He's like the sun. Kind of interesting, right? Sun, Jesus. Anyways. With that being said, you may feel like life is just pressing down on you, squeezing you in this tight corner, giving you no options, right? You're feeling so empty or secluded. You're feeling so pressed down, trapped, like you you can find no other way out. There is no other way way to get out of this situation, to get out of these emotions. But I promise you, you got to look it out a different way. Look at it from God's perspective. You're a seed in his soil. The world is his soil. And each and every one of us are a seed. Now, it's getting exciting, but I have to pray. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for everything. You're good. Father, speak to your people, not my people. This isn't I am Jeremy, whatever. This is I am loved church, Father. You are the church. We are the pillars. We are your people. We worship you. They don't worship me. I pray they don't worship me. Father, I pray that you speak to your church, your people, whether they know you, don't know you, or falling away, whatever the situation is. Father, I pray that you have a message for them so they can know something about who you are and they can get something today. This is going to be a glorious day. This is going to be a glorious sermon. Why? Not because of me, but because I believe in who I don't see. And I pray they would believe too. In Jesus' name. Open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our spirit, open whatever is closed, whatever is locked, whatever lies the enemy has pushed upon us. I pray that you would break through. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So with that being said, let's get right to it. Back to it. We're seeds and the soil is God. It's his earth. It's his. He created it. So with that being said, what does the seed need? It needs nutrition. It needs sunlight and it needs water. Where do you get your water from? Now, the Bible is very particular. It says the word is like streams of water. So we get the water from the word of God, the Holy Bible. There's only one Bible. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> With that being said, now where do we get the sunlight? We get it from God. Not that God is the sun. He created the sun. But we get it from him. You can have water. You can have good soil and no sunlight. You won't grow. See, it's God who grows the seed. It's God who grows us. We, as ministers, we 
water each other. We encourage each other. We teach each other. We help each other. We are to be his hands and his feet, but only he can be him. So whatever your circumstances, whatever you're facing, I promise you, you may feel enclosed, encapsulated. You may feel locked down. You may feel trapped, whatever it is. God says, I'm going to use your weaknesses to give me strength and glory. Think about that. God turns the things that are weak in this world and he makes them strong. He turns the things that are smart and wise in this world and he makes them foolish. He turns the foolish things in this world and he makes them wise. I woke up today and I was like, I know my calling now. I know what God has called me to do, but it was doubt in my heart about it. I don't know. I don't know. I believe I'm forgiven. Therefore, I, because I believe it, I receive Jesus' forgiveness. I've received his healing blood flowing through my body and I can feel it. I'm like, woo, amazing, right? But just like we believe those things, we have to believe everything else that the Bible says about who he is, who we are, and his promises of what he has for us. We have to believe it. The difference between Moses and the people he helped get out of Egypt and cross into the promised land was by faith. God is not pleased unless you have faith. That's the only way to please God. That's the only way for us to woo God. Now, like I said, we are We are faced with many trials and situations and circumstances, even pressed on corners. We are the seed in darkness and soil, thinking that there's no escape. And the difference between the seed that grows and the seed that doesn't is the one that keeps stretching. What does that mean? It keeps growing past what it believed to be true. Some of us are just sitting there like seeds being like, I'm never going to grow into anything. I'm never going to surmount to whatever. Or I've got these obstacles in my way. I can't overcome them and this and this and that. And you're absolutely right. By yourself, you cannot grow. Then there's the other seeds, the ones that hear the word of God, that know God, that believe, that trust. And they're the, they're the seeds and they're, and they're not reaching in themselves to grow. They're reaching towards the sky. They're reaching towards God. And God is reaching down and he's pulling his hand into that soil. And that soil is reaching out of the soil. That seed is reaching out of the soil. And God and them have locked arms connected And that's what we have to do. The world is drowning and God's in his lifeboat, reaching out every day. His mercy is reaching out for us. And we are the seeds in the soil. And we are the people in the water, probably drowning in our sins, drowning in our circumstances, drowning in our, this world's expectations, whatever your situation is, I promise you, if you reach out, God will pull you through. Life is a wilderness experience. Sometimes we can rest, but a lot of times, most of the times, we're at war. We're at war with our own sinful nature. We're at war with other people's sinful nature. We're at war with the demons and darkness and heavenly places that are speaking lies over people, speaking lies over me and you. But God is there in the storm. And he says, I will pull you all the way through all the way through. And what does he promise us? He promises us eternal life where there's no more pain, where there's no more suffering, where there's no more evil, no more bad. All is eternal blissfulness and holiness and heavenliness. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I'm tired of this shifting and changing and, and, and these darkness and evilness. It's just so bad. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. Aren't you? So with that being said, we are seeds. We can't grow by ourselves. And sometimes God will put people in our life to help us grow because we're so proud. So we want to grow by ourselves. 
I don't need these people. I don't need those people to grow. I will grow by myself. And God's like, that's why he's made his church. That's how he's appointed teachers and prophets and, and so forth and all these other people to help us grow. And he's like, well, they're only going to grow as far as they let other people in and start trusting others. Or forgiving and so forth. So with that being said, your situation isn't hopeless. The problem with your situation, like any given situation, is you think your victory is in yourself. But your victory is in him. And he says, I have all of your victory. Whatever your circumstance is, Revelation promises us that. It says all wisdom is in found in Christ. All knowledge is found in Christ. All power is found in Christ. All glory is found in Christ. All peace is found in Christ. All love is found in Christ. All holiness, whatever you need, is all found in Christ. You get what I'm saying? Understanding, whatever it is. It's found nowhere else. That's what God promises. That's what he means by salvation. You see, a lot of us, we depend on this world to give us justice. Justice is found in Christ. We, we depend on mercy from, from these people or from these institutes to, to give us mercy. And God's like, mercy is found in Christ. So whatever your situation is, you're a seed, I'm a seed. And some of us have grown in, and are fully growing into what God has ordained, what God has set before us. He's like, you're a tree, right? Whether you're an apple tree, orange tree, pear tree, oak tree, whatever you're, whatever you're designed to be. He says, I have set appointed times for you to grow. And there's seasons, right? We see, we see trees go through seasons of life, right? We see them go through, you know, summer, winter, uh, spring, and so forth. You get what I'm saying? But during these times, they fl- sometimes they flourish in certain seasons. And other times, they have, to, they have to huddle up because it's, you know, winter, you know? Or sometimes it gets too hot. And it, burn, it burns the tree away or whatever, dries out. And Jesus is saying, you have to stay soaked. You have to stay nourished. When I was cleaning my lawn, I have a lot of bad roots in this soil that I'm working on right here in this area. And I have to dig up about a foot deep in to get all the bad roots out. That could be past experiences. That could be wounds in my past or present. That could be bad ways of thinking about myself or other people. And he says, you have to pull all that out in order to have real life, in order to flourish. Maybe you have to get rid of bad friends, bad influences. You have to change your whole way of being, thinking, what you believe in. And he says, I have all the victory in Christ. I came to help you. I had a friend come over the other day and he helped me dig up all my weeds. Isn't that nice? And that's what the church is. We as Christians, we're supposed to help people dig up their weeds. We're supposed to help other believers pull out those thorns and, 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 and help them revitalize re-nourish their their soil because some of their soils some of their hearts are hard that's what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be the hands and feet for god and it's but god is the only one who will actually grow them we're supposed to water each other so with that being said we water each other we water the world but first we have to be watered by god It's all useless doing it without God. Doing anything without God, you're wasting your time. So I say all that to say this. You're a seed, I'm a seed, everyone's a seed. We need nutrients in the soil. We need water from the word of God. We need to soften our hearts. That's the soil. 
we need to we need the water from the word of God and we need to believe in God his death and resurrection we need to believe that he could pull us through anything and he says that's the key those are the things you need you need to believe in me you need to read my word and you need to trust the process God is always trying to bring us to new heights, new horizons, new places, new blessings. He wants to give us things brand new, not used. He wants to make us brand new. But in order to do that, we have to go through darkness, like the seed planted in the soil. A seed cannot grow unless it's been pressured Um, There's an analogy about a butterfly. A butterfly can't sprout its wings when it's in the cocoon unless it has enough pressure. And someone tried to help that butterfly hatch and started to clip away the shell that it was uh, um, covered with. And it actually killed the butterfly because the cocoon what it does is it creates enough pressure for the butterfly to stretch and as it stretches the blood flows through the wings to be able to cause it to hatch and they they helped it just a little bit and it killed the butterfly the the blood wasn't able to circulate all throughout the wings which in in turn wasn't able to expand out of the cocoon and that's what the seed is like as well The plant is in the seed, but the seed needs enough water and pressure in order to expand and grow beyond its normal beliefs or capabilities. And it needs to believe that. A lot of seed gets planted and it doesn't grow beyond its uh, uh, planted in bad soil, doesn't get enough water, or simply doesn't, I guess in this situation, believe doesn't reach towards something greater than itself. In order to grow, you have to believe in something greater than yourself. You can't believe in yourself because yourself got you in that situation. Yourself will keep you in that situation. In order to grow beyond anything, you have to grow beyond what you naturally believe, what you naturally know, what your capabilities or strengths are. You have to reach beyond what you can see, what you already know. That's the only way to grow. And you need a lot of pressure. You need people who are willing to help you become better, help you work on yourself as you can help work on them. And if you don't have those kind of people in your life who are willing to correct you, willing to guide you, teach you, willing to learn from your mistakes, then you're never going to see the promises of God, the promised land. You're never going to see life beyond what you've already experienced. You're always going to think these negative things about yourself and about other people and about whatever and think that life is horrible, and it's not. The difference between the seed that grew and the one that didn't was it it had enough nutrients. It had water and it had sunlight. We have a soft heart, we have water, and we have God. And we reach towards God every day, and we grow, and we humble ourselves to learn something new. Today is a new day to learn something new, to meet someone new, to learn something new about someone that I thought I already knew about them, to listen more. I'm not a very good listener, but to listen more, to, to understand what I'm listening to, to understand what we're reading, to grow in all areas of our life. So when we go through trials and seasons, it's not to condemn us. It's not to, God doesn't want to condemn you. He wants to set you free. And a lot of it is to set you free from yourself. So with that being said, we are to reach out to heaven, 
cry out to the Lord. Deliver me. I can't deliver myself. I'm tired of figuring this out all by myself. I need help. I need friends. I need, I need people in my life who actually care about me. Not people who say they care about me, but don't show it in action. I want to become those people. A lot of us, we want change in this world, but we don't want to change. And God says, I've already supplied change. You have to do it first. That's what leaders do. Leaders don't point the finger for everyone to change. Leaders change and everyone follows. That's what Jesus did. That's what all the prophets and apostles did. You want your world to be better? You have to be better at whatever you're accusing this world of being. And it may stay that way, but it doesn't mean you have to go down to their level. But you go down there to help them. And that's why we're here. Wherever you're at, wherever you live, I don't like the town that I live in. I'm going to be honest. But God has placed me here for a reason. I've been trying to run away for a long time. <laughs> for certain reasons, maybe this town, maybe this habit or whatever. Avoiding it like it wasn't a problem, but it is a problem. There's lots of problems. It's obvious. Everyone sees it. Everyone talks about it. But what are we going to do about it? Are we tired of talking what are we going to do about it? The Bible is very clear on what God wants and expects of us. Now, it's up to us whether we believe that enough to act on it. I don't know about you. I'm not accountable to people in some way. I'm accountable to God. So if he's placed me on this earth and he's placed me in this circumstances and he's placed me in this town then he must believe that I can do something. There's something in me, my talents, my hobbies, my character, whatever, that I can do something about it instead of complaining about it. I've complained a lot. I've complained enough. It's time to not just stop complaining, to be grateful and to apply what, who I am and what I know and what I have in the community that I'm with. This is now my community. This is now my world. We cannot leave it up to these people in charge, some of them responsible, probably a lot of them not, I don't know, to do the job. We are the people. This nation was founded on the people, for the people, by the people. We cannot depend on our authority, whether it's the police department, whether it's the government, politicians, we can't depend on them no more. We never really could. We can depend on the Lord and each other. We are the people and we need to change. They will never change. We need to do that. And I don't know about you, even if they don't, I'm still held accountable by God and I'm called to change. And even if you don't, I will change because God says this. He says, it doesn't benefit me whether you obey me or not. It benefits you. So with that being said, let's humble ourselves, not just in prayer, but in action. To do what the word says, regardless if anyone else is doing it with us or not, regardless. And I promise you, Life is so good when you find out that obedience is actually good and beneficial for you and I. Even if they don't obey it, even if they don't, they're hypocrites of their own instructions upon us or whoever. Doesn't mean that it won't benefit you and I. Man, I feel like I've been talking for a long time. Normally my sermons are pretty short because... I film them on my phone, but now I'm using the camera because I felt something special and I felt like maybe every once in a while I could go a little longer. You can't grow in a place that you're comfortable. You have to go outside of your comfort zone.
That's the thing about this world. I want to grow, but I want to do the same thing that I've been doing. God's like, in order to grow, you have to do something you have never done before. You have to continue to challenge yourself to do something you've never done before, to go beyond where you've already been. That's what it means to have faith, to blindly walk and do that like a child. When I watch my children run around, wherever they're at, they're always curious. They're always up in people's faces and stuff. They're always like running and doing stuff. They are completely unaware, but they're so curious. And a lot of things are dangerous, you know, running in the street and stuff like that. Don't condone that. But there's just so like, who are you? Who are you? What is this? What is that? And that's what God says we need to become again. They don't have much boundaries, and I, I get it. Boundaries are good. But we need to be more curious about one another. We need to be more curious about our environment. We need to be more curious about learning, about growing. He says you cannot grow if you don't step outside the box. You got to go outside the box. You got to go outside your comfort zone. Go, go try, like you love coffee. Go, go drink and try another coffee joint. You never know who you may meet and then eventually become your best friend or something. You're missing out on the most amazing and important things that God wants you to learn and experience because you won't jump outside your comfort zone. You won't try to meet new people. You won't try to do new things. You won't try to take new advice because it's not your advice. And God is saying, you need, to, you need to start to challenge yourself, to not trust in yourself, to trust in the unknown. Trust the journey, even when you can't see it, even when you don't know it. And a lot of us, we come up with these preconceived notions that we understand people and judge them because we're really afraid to find out that we're probably wrong and it makes us comfortable to judge. Judging is just a way to say, I'm insecure about myself so I'm going to judge you and put you in this box, though I have never read the book. We judge a book by its cover. It's so cliche. But why are things cliche? Why do we hear these things all the time to the, when we were younger to the day we grow older and we keep hearing this same thing over and over and over again? Because we haven't learned from it. If someone keeps saying, you need to forgive, you need to forgive, you need to forgive, and you hear that for 10 years, you hear that for 20 years, you hear that for 30 years, it's because, oh, I've already heard it, I know. But God is saying, you have not actually applied it. If God keeps telling you to do something and you're not doing it, what does that mean? You may know something, comprehend it, and not apply it, which actually means you don't know it. Why, why do I keep going through these storms in my life? Why do I keep making enemies? Or why do I keep going through these issues in my life? And God's like, you're going to keep going through that for your whole life until you finally learn. And the question is it everyone else needs to change and then I'll learn my lesson. It's you. It's your heart. God loves us so much. So when he says, I am with you to the end, he's saying, even when you fall, I'll pick you up. Even when you feel ashamed or whatever, I will clothe you in my righteousness. I take more pleasure in someone who has faith than someone who never tries. Someone who acts than someone who never does. We judge people for any reason, for every reason. We find excuses to judge people. And all that simply entails is that we're insecure and we're, we're, we're afraid. And that's what religion is. When we don't jump outside of our norm, but we expect everyone on the outside to jump into our box with us. I'm ignorant. I'm self-loathing. I'm in this box. So everyone needs to be in this box. Because I'm afraid to get out of my box. Trust me. 
I know exactly what this feels. I will never teach you something I am not experiencing, have not experienced, or did not go through, or whatever, or will not go through. What is life? I think it's just like this endless sea of mercy. Just a sea of mercy that just never ends. It rises and it falls, it crashes, and then it's calm. And it's this one unity with all things. We're united with everything. And Jesus says, I will always be with you. When it rises, I'm with you. When it falls, I'm with you. When it crashes, I'm with you. When it dries up and dies, I'm with you to the end. We don't really understand how merciful, how forgiven, and how merciful this world is. It can be. And Jesus is calling out for us to step on that endless sea of water, of mercy. Whatever your fear is, whatever your suffering is, there's mercy. There's mercy at the foot of the cross. There's mercy in trusting in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. He wants to take you to the very end. And he says, the only way you can get out of yourself of your box is if you step out of what you already know into the unknown. The unknown. Think about it. The unknown place is the safest place you can be. The enemy wants you to not understand the unknown. People are afraid of what they don't know. You are, I am, we all are. It's human nature. He says, don't be afraid of what you don't know, but trust in what you don't know. And I will show you whether it's good or whether it's bad. But you cannot judge something when you do not know something. I've already read that. that that's a terrible book because the way it's titled. And Jesus is like, you never read the book. This person's bad because what I've heard about this person or what they look like or what I don't like about them or they're not like me or whatever it is. And Jesus is like, you don't even know this person. That's human nature, human sinful nature. And Jesus is always trying to take us into greater heights. You want to experience life. You want to truly have a good life you have to step out of your box you have to reach for the stars by faith you have to grow outside beyond yourself when i was a child i acted and thought like a child but as i started learning and growing i grew out of my child childish ways and i grew into a man and eventually I'll grow beyond this physical body. But those who grow are the only ones who will experience eternity with the Lord. You have to grow outside what you already know. The Bible is a stepping stone. It's the cornerstone. Everything is connected to the word. Step beyond what you already know and step into what you don't know, into relationships you don't know, into activities that are not sinful that you don't know. And I promise you, if you have faith like a child, small as a mustard seed, life is always beyond the knowing. The goodness of God, the presence of God, the love of God is always beyond what we will ever understand or know. We have to always press outside of ourselves and inside to Christ. 
I thank you for watching so much. God bless you. Amen.